Preserve Big Cats What section of the universe did Hubbard lay his foundation of the Xenu story? I heard Venus was involved somehow slash somewhere. But my point is, wouldn't Scientologists want to know if there's any astronomical evidence left over? And why hasn't it been put forth by the Astronomical Society? Okay, so let me take up the first part of your, the last part of your question first, because um, when you're looking, when you're a Scientologist, and when you've gotten up to OT3, you are all in. You, at that point, you have been security checked, you've been raked over the coals a lot of times, they trust you, and they trust that you are all in with L. Ron Hubbard, and that his word is law. So, unless you're a Paul Haggis type who gets to that level, reads the material and goes, what? This is crazy. And, you know, hits the road. Unless that happens, if you read the material and you go, yeah, yeah, that sounds legit, <laughs> right? Then you don't care what astronomers like Neil deGrasse Tyson or astrophysicists have to say about that material. Hubbard said it was law, and that's all you needed to hear. Because they, Hubbard has convinced Scientologists that scientists, astrophysicists, physicists, engineers, chemists, they, they don't know what they're talking about. You know, Hubbard knows what what's the real deal with science is. They don't. And so they're not going to take, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson's word over L. Ron Hubbard's. So, and uh, uh, even the briefest of critical looking at the material of OT3 Will, will it, it breaks down immediately in the face of, of you know, the, the Earth's geography and geology, uh, the plate tectonics. I mean, there's so many things that show that Hubbard's story is pure madness that, you know, some, but Scientologists can't let themselves go there. So that's why they don't really care about anybody validating Hubbard's works. Now, if somebody were to indicate that it was true, they go, see, see, right? But, but nobody's doing that. So instead, you know, like I said, all the evidence points to it being ridiculous and, and being a, a, you know, a hallucinatory fable. So they're not going to accept, you know, that evidence against it. All right. As far as where it all happened, you know, this just becomes the most fascinating stuff. Hubbard was so random in dropping these hints and stories about where things happened and what the cosmology of our universe was. So you have this Markab confederacy, and it's, it's, supposed to, it's supposed to consist of the 13 habitated or habitable star systems around Earth, of which we're part. Right? We were Tegiak in this old story. But that's just this sector of the universe, this little corner of it. Uh, and the Markabs were supposed to be the civilization that existed here that, that ruled over this sector of the galaxy. And Zenu, or Zemu, was this guy, the galactic overlord, who owned or ran this territory. And he was kind of like Pol Pot or, you know, Kim Jong-un or something. So, uh, so he's not a real nice guy, and he engaged in this whole genocidal procedure to deal with overpopulation. But that was just here, in this corner of the, of the Milky Way. In the big Y universe, there's all kinds of other things going on. Hubbard talked about a galactic council, which consisted of people who were kind of half bodies and half spiritual entities, like they were aware of their spiritual nature or spiritual selves. Um, and it wasn't really clear to me, but I don't think that he was... Re that he talked about that earlier than he talked about the whole Xenu thing. So that wasn't necessarily supposed to be part of the, of the whole um, Markab thing. Then he mentioned, then he brings up this Markabian civilization in a number of places. Then he brings up how there are implant stations on Mars and on Venus. Uh, so if you are, you know, if you're uh, a, a Thetan and you die, you, your body dies, and you manage to get off this planet, because there's also implant stations here on Earth too, but if you manage to get off this planet, they'll, then maybe you'll get sucked into Mars and you'll get implanted there, because those apparently were... Uh, there were a series of invader forces, I think six or, or five or six of them or something, that have come through this solar system over its, over its history. And they have set up installations in different places, Mars, Venus, and they have had battles. Hubbard talks about how old Egypt was actually a space-faring civilization and how there were battles going on between these, uh, uh, in, these uh, invader forces 
you know, right out of sight of uh, the civilization, the Egyptian civilization, and how if you look at some of the hieroglyphics and some of the pictures of the uh, uh, pharaohs, then you can see, you know, laser guns. <laughs> you know, it's like he's, it's like, it's like Hubbard would have fit on ancient aliens, aliens perfectly. You know, it was aliens, right? It, he just would have fit just hand in glove with that show. Because he was always dropping hints about that stuff. I mean, hell, he talked about Lemuria and Atalanta and how these old civilizations existed on this planet. And there were these giant people who roamed around, you know, the Lemurians or something. I mean, he was just dropping this stuff left, right, and center. Uh, I mean, this goes all the way back to History of Man in 1952, where he's talking about the Piltdown Man as a real thing. Uh, so, you know, Hubbard just threw in, you know, Bermuda Triangle. Uh, I think I think somewhere in a lecture he mentioned that that was a either an implant station or a crashed ship probably some some uh, some uh, spaceship crashed in the middle of the of the ocean there at the center of the Bermuda Triangle and it's just been sucking in other ships to it because it's you know down there doing whatever I don't know whatever logic he was using there. Of course, we've, you know, we've, we've been over this territory in, in, sub, in submersibles and submarines and things. Nobody's finding any spaceships down there. But Hubbard would just throw this stuff out in a lecture, and it would just sounded so good at the time, and it fit in with whatever story he was telling. And if you try to piece all this stuff together, it doesn't come together in a coherent whole, is, is really the point of all this randomness that I'm, that I'm throwing out at you. Um, it, it's, not a, it's not a logically consistent, integrated whole. So, I, you know, that's about as much as I can talk about with it sensibly. I mean, we could, you know, draw conclusions, connect dots that don't connect, and somehow make this cosmology all work, but I, I don't know that it was ever clear in Hubbard's head. And that's, you know, that's all what I can tell you off the top of my head about it. I, I hope that it was entertaining at least, if, if not as informative as maybe it could have been.